In 1923, the top half of a giant skull was discovered along the Mongolian-Chinese border. It looked like the skull of a wolf, but was more than three times as long, but possessing teeth just as sharp and as well adapted for cutting through flesh. The creature this giant skull once belonged to was named Andrew Sarkis, and under closer inspection it was apparent that this was not related to the carnivorans like bears and wolves. It was a mammal, but more closely aligned with the cows and horses. It was a meat-eating ungulate. It ran on hooves while hunting and scavenging. The skull was discovered by Kan Shon Pao, but first described by Henry Osborne, who thought that it belonged in a group of hoofed predators called Masonicids that lived around the same time as Andrusarchus, about 45 million years ago during the Eocene Epoch. Today, top terrestrial carnivals around the world are very homogenous and not very diverse at all. Barring a few exceptions, most large land predators in most ecosystems are normally a feline or maybe occasionally a canine. Around 30 million years and longer ago, this was a very different story, and many regions of the planet had their own distinct carnival. There were the forest rockets in South America, creodonts in North America, and even crocodiles took to the land for a little while in the jungles of Europe. In Asia, and later spreading throughout the world, there were the Masonicids, that unlike any predators today that are usually armed with claws or talons, were armed or maybe stuck with hoofs. And despite having hoofs, they probably would have had a lot more in common with wolves in body and skull shape. Without the aid of claws, it must have been difficult for these creatures to grip their prey, but they seem to have gotten on just fine without them. They did eventually go extinct, of course, but this doesn't seem to have been from being outcompeted, and it is actually more likely that it was due to climate change. Although why they disappeared is actually not very well understood, as they were successful and widespread during the Eocene. In fact, the ancestors of whales were also these peculiar carnivorous ungulates as well. It was once thought that the ancestors of whales were Masonicids, which is a pretty sound conclusion considering they both shared these unusual triangle teeth. But due to new discoveries and DNA evidence, it seems that whales are in fact artiodactyls, which contains animals like cows, pigs, deers, and camels. And it is thought that the Masonicids and artiodactyls were sister groups. So this would mean that the ancestors of whales were just another group of hoofed carnivores that may have evolved to eat meat independently. This just shows that these creatures must have been quite capable, and the hooves couldn't have given them that much of a disadvantage. Although Osborne believed that Andrew Sarkis was a Masonicid, many others were not satisfied with this, including members of the expedition, that thought that it would have been a large omnivorous pig-like animal. Andrew Sarkis is still to this day only known from the single skull specimen that was discovered all those years ago, so methods of inductive reasoning are essential to having any idea what this creature would have looked like. When you find a new extinct creature, especially one known from partial remains, you will assume that it would share traits with its closest relatives. This is called phylogenetic bracketing, and is a very important method of induction used for studying extinct animals. Let's say you found a skeleton belonging to a now extinct feline. If this creature's remains showed evidence that it should be placed somewhere in between two living felines, you could make inferences of what it would look like from the two living species. For instance, if they both had spots, you would assume this creature also had spots, because this is most likely to be the case, and this would only change if you found proof otherwise. For example, maybe you found the same extinct species frozen in permafrost, and it had preserved fur coverings without spots. The assumption that Andrew Sarkis was a Masonicid has arguably inspired most paleo art of this creature, as most depictions are usually very wolf-like. However, the biggest consequence of believing Andrew Sarkis was a Masonicid is that it would have had to have been massive. After the discovery, Henry Osborne calculated the size of Andrew Sarkis using the proportions of a Masonicid he believed to be a smaller relative of Andrew Sarkis. This was a creature about 1.5 meters long, with a skull length around 25 centimeters, so it had a body that was six times as long as its skull. Applying these proportions to a creature with a skull that was almost a meter long would leave you with an animal approaching 5 meters. This was a ridiculously large size, and indeed Osborne knew this claiming Andrew Sarkis was the largest mammalian carnivore to have ever lived. But of course, many have challenged that Andrew Sarkis was a Masonicid ever since its discovery, and this view has actually now been pretty much disproven by a study in 2010. It showed that Andrew Sarkis in fact belonged in a group of animals known as Satankodontomorpha, making Andrew Sarkis much more closely related to whales than they were to Masonicids. Satankodontomorpha is a group of animals that contains the whales and their close land-dwelling relatives, these would be primitive whale ancestors like Pachycetus, but also hippos. And if you look at the skull of many creatures belonging in this group, they do bear resemblance to the skull of Andrew Sarkis. 
So the Masonicids turned out not to be closely related to whales, but Andrusarchus actually was. The closest relative to Andrusarchus in this group are the Entelodonts, often referred to as the Hell Pigs, a large group of animals that were common for about 20 million years ago in the middle of the Cenozoic. On average, these creatures had a significantly larger skull in proportion to their body size than Masonicids. For example, the Entelodont Entelodon was about 2.5 meters long, and its skull measures around 65 centimeters, meaning that over a quarter of their body length was made up by their skull. Using these proportions on Andrusarchus would bring its body length into the much more reasonable 3.5 meters range. Andrusarchus being a relative of the Entelodonts would mean that it was a much smaller creature than what Osborne imagined. However, with these new proportions, it would have still been one of the largest mammalian predators known to have lived. Knowing that Andrusarchus was likely related to the Entelodonts also meant that they probably lived in a similar way. Entelodonts are actually thought to be omnivorous, eating anything they came across, and were probably mostly scavengers, only occasionally hunting their prey. This actually makes a lot of sense if this is how Andrusarchus lived, as the largest land predators in the world today are bears, which are omnivores and sometimes hunt their prey. If Andrew Sarkis lived in a similar way, it would better explain how such a large animal would have survived in its ecosystem. The Masonicids, Andrew Sarkis, and their Intelodont kin are now extinct and have been replaced by their carnivoran and clawed successors. However, these creatures will forever show us that while hunting prey, claws may just be overrated. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to be notified of future uploads, then you can subscribe. If you really like the video, then consider becoming a patron. A massive thank you goes to my current patrons, especially Karim, David Vanderost, and Fozzleworth.